Good morning. Welcome to Daily Prayer on Wednesday, the 21st of July. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today for prayer. Would you please bow your heads with me now as together we come into the Lord's presence on another glorious day. And as we remember that we have a faithful God who's always ready to listen to our prayers. Words from Psalm 119. Remember your words to your servant in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my distress, that your promises give me life. The arrogant utterly deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. When I think of your ordinances from of old, I take comfort, O Lord. Hot indignation seizes me because of the wicked, those who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs wherever I make my home. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and keep your law. This blessing has fallen to me, for I have kept your precepts. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I implore your favour with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think of your ways, I turn my feet to your decrees. I hurry and do not delay to keep your commandments. Though the call to the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I rise to praise you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a companion of all who fear you, of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was humbled, I went astray. But now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The arrogant smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their hearts are fat and gross, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was humbled, so that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Thanks be to God. For his word. Now let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, you are almost always more ready to hear than we are to pray and give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, save through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. So may Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives, and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're continuing to read through the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Today we begin to read in chapter 15 at the first verse. Then certain individuals came down from Judea. And were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church 
and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and said, It is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, My brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and in cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. Now therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. Thanks be to God for his word. Again today we read of the way in which faithfulness to the gospel and faithfulness to the teaching that we've been we've received is so important. And here it's all about whether faith in Jesus and the receiving of God's grace is sufficient or whether those uh, Gentile believers, those who were not Jews, needed first to become Jews in order to receive salvation. And we'll read more about this in the coming days. But what's clear is that God is already at work. God is already saving the Gentiles. God's already bringing them the gift of salvation by grace. People are responding to faith. Uh, God's being gracious to so many people and the church is growing. But as often is the case, the church, the wider church, and sometimes the leaders within it, are struggling to keep up with God. And they are putting limits on God's mercy and grace. But there's a wideness in God's mercy, as the old hymn puts it. Now, let me just look back and say they were very, very bad leaders and bad disciples. And of course, we're not like that today. Just think about the limits that we place on what God can do. About how we act as gatekeepers, doorkeepers to people coming to the church. Maybe we say we don't want people like that here. But as Paul says, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. In other words, there's one grace, as it were, the grace that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ that saves. And it's the same for all, for as Paul says elsewhere, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And some sins are more visible and some are invisible. But we all stand in need of heaven's mercy and grace. And so today we can think about how we might be loving to others and be embracing of others, welcoming of others, regardless of their background. And how, as we return to our churches to, to public worship over the coming weeks and months, how we might make sure that our places of worship are places of welcome. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's pray together for the world, for ourselves, for those we know and love. Let's pray. As we continue to pray this month for Christians and for the church in India, today we pray for Mahesh 
a pastor in his 50s who's been accused by Hindu extremists um, falsely of a range of crimes, including forcibly converting people. We thank God for those who've been able to help and support them uh, legally. And we pray that that continued work of protection and encouragement and support would strengthen believers to stand firm in their faith and that the church would grow. We pray for wisdom and we pray for courage to defend the rights of all in India to worship according to their conscience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for the work of BMS World Mission in Bangladesh. And for those who are planting churches there, we pray for Peter and Louise Lynch. And we ask that the Lord would give them wisdom and creativity as they support and encourage church planters throughout the country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our government, locally and nationally. We pray for integrity and honesty. We pray for faithfulness and discernment and wisdom. And pray that both locally and nationally, those who lead might do so for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we pray for ourselves and for any we know and love who are in need this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you today and keep you safe. Until we meet again tomorrow, goodbye and God bless you.